you're listening to a podcast from digitaloilandgas.com. This podcast is entitled, How to Unlock Billions of uh, Value from Oil and Gas Capital Projects, Ops and Maintenance Using Blockchain. How might blockchain technology solve one of the most frustrating and costly problems of the digital oil and gas industry? The sector builds new assets constantly, but engineering documents and systems that are supposed to accurately depict as-built assets do not, leading to substantial cost and waste for the oil and gas asset owner. Blockchain could be a solution. So is capital execution a blockchain kind of problem? Well, I think it is. Blockchain is a digital solution to one of modern society's basic problems that we can't always trust everyone in our business activities. I believe the major capital side of oil and gas and its documentation uh, trail have many of the features of a business model that could benefit from blockchain technology. First, the parties in the build cycle don't actually trust each other. So the industry has evolved elaborate document numbering schemes, document check-in and check-out processes, claims, documentation standards, ways of working, complex team structures, and duplicate owner builder teams to compensate. In today's Uh, engineering world, the product is actually completely digitized already, that is the diagrams, specifications, and metadata. These digital assets are copied and distributed to the parties involved depending on their need. There's an ample volume of documents to contribute to a blockchain. A big capital project, say $2 billion or more, might generate 10 million documents in total. During the life of the asset, even more documents and data points are created, and the assets can last 20 to 40 years. The value at stake is substantial. Oil and gas assets are expensive, ranging from a few million for a new well up to tens of billions for a new oil refinery or an LNG plant. And there is, finally, no standard trusted central depository for engineering content, so active projects invent a variety of practices to compensate, including builders exchanges, project offices, and special software for tracking document movements. Indeed, it's already a peer-to-peer system, the basis of blockchain. Now, there is a significant prize to the oil and gas company, and as I see it, there are two key value release opportunities on the capital cycle. First is during construction. As assets are built, the industry devotes a huge amount of time and money to ensure that the data about the asset being built actually matches the asset. This costly overhead includes margin on margin, as is um, as priced as uh, cost plus projects, and is growing over time because of evolving regulations. Identifying what data is incorrect It's like finding a needle in a haystack. Asset owners, of course, routinely pay net 60 days or longer to allow owners' teams enough time to find and correct errors, both in the physical asset as well as in the data, a matching data asset. If data quality could improve to 100%, then asset owners could revert back to paying much faster, say 7 to 30 days, providing a much-needed cash flow boost to the supply chain. The second key place where value is released is throughout the asset lifecycle. The operations and maintenance function in in oil and gas needs to trust the accuracy of the engineering documents and data received from the builder or builders of those assets. When asset data doesn't match the asset, then all manner of problems crop up for ops and maintenance. Maintenance teams can't schedule their maintenance tasks ahead of time because they don't know what what to expect. Maintenance becomes more reactionary and costly. The procurement function can't order the right parts, so they order too many, too few, or the wrong ones. The asset may not perform according to the documentation, leading to variability in production. And turnaround planners can't design an effective turnaround plan because of the uncertainty of the asset. Turnarounds are more costly than they need to be. Extra time and effort must be invested in verifying the data and rebuilding the databases, and extra costs must be incurred to carry out any work on the asset. And in the event of a mishap or non-compliance with regulations, the asset owner may not be able to prove what was actually built, leading to penalties. And finally, the latest advancements in digital solutions to lower cost and improve productivity that rely on high-quality as-built data are simply unobtainable. All these costs show up after the construction cycle is complete. There's very low incentive in the system for those involved in building the asset to fix the problem because the benefits of improvement all accrue to the owners and operators, and the costs to fix the problem reside with the builders. So here's the critical question. How can owners lower their future cost of maintenance while not increasing the cost of new assets, given that they're already paying for accurate data? Now, there's some structural elements throughout the industry that make this problem particularly uh, difficult to fix, but also parallel the features of industries that are tackling the similar kind of problem through blockchain. 
Asset builds involve multiple parties, from engineering firms, specialist advisories, fabricators, equipment suppliers, subcontractors, trades, and so on. Getting their cooperation is a problem. The participants in the industry have made their own separate and incompatible investments in engineering tools and technologies for rendering content and are highly resistant to abandoning these investments. Imposing a technical tool standard on a project means engineering users would need to be substantially retrained, which will impose a cost to the project and the participants. Imposed standards can also dampen competitive rivalry, particularly if the tools are not in wide use. There are no widely agreed data standards in the industry, leading participants to pursue their own self-interest in completing their work. Standards are emerging, such as BIM in the UK, but these building standards may take some time before they migrate to non-building assets. And then to meet timelines, some long lead items are ordered early in the build cycle, well before the as-built diagrams are complete. And finally, the assets and related documents are very detailed and complex, which makes finding data issues quite challenging. What would a blockchain solution need to do? Well, first, it would they need to help identify data issues, and second, incent the parties to correct the data issues. It's important to note that the parties involved in construction have all the systems needed to manage their documents and data, so blockchain technology needs only to help improve data accuracy. So first, a blockchain solution would help identify when digital content, that is, the documents or data exchanged between two parties in a contractor supplier relationship, do not match. The contractor issues contract specifications describing the asset or item that is to be delivered, and the supplier builds the asset or item and produces the as-built specifications describing the actual as-built asset. If the contract specifications match the as-built specifications at whatever level of detail the contractor requires, the parties agree that the as-built data is correct. If the contract specifications do not match the as-built specifications, the two parties would work to understand and resolve the differences until the parties agree. At that point, the as-built specification is deemed correct and supersedes the contract specs. The blockchain would record the agreement, providing an audit trail of the agreed content. This would support subsequent requirements to hold parties accountable for the quality of asset data. Second, the blockchain solution would need to incentivize the contractor and supplier to work together to produce accurate data. The owner of the asset, who bears all the costs of poor as-built data quality, could pay digital tokens each time the contractor and supplier reach an agreement, as it, that is, when they jointly agree the as-built data is correct. These tokens could be redeemable as contract bonuses or digital currency or reputation credits applicable to the next uh, contract to be awarded. This blockchain structure could work for any kind of digital content, including diagrams, data sheets, and equipment specifications. Uh, as you look around the industry, though, you do find some proxy solutions that are quite inspirational. One solution that looks very comparable is the Walmart blockchain ex experiment in the Chinese pork industry. Walmart is particularly interested in improving food sa uh, processing value chains, where issues of food safety and fraud can create eventual food safety concerns. The company wants to track food products through its value chains, from the farm to finishing yard to the abattoir to wholesaler to processor to retailer. This uh, solution shows many of the same issues as the capital projects. Lots of participants, the costs of food safety are carried by the food owner, that is Walmart, and not the participants, and ample opportunity for, raw, for fraud or misalignment between the participants. A good question now is how could a blockchain solution move forward in oil and gas? Well, some party needs to get started with this idea. It could be an asset owner who's about to embark on a new build program, or perhaps is starting a significant overhaul of a big asset, if that overhaul will generate new asset data. It could be an engineering procurement and construction firm who wishes to obtain an advantage in managing its projects. A blockchain solution could be a powerful new addition to its service model. As the most recent Deloitte Canada publication points out, Canadian businesses lack courage. What we need is a little courage to tackle this problem. The prize is huge to Canada in its oil and gas sector, but the solution concept also applies to the utility sector and military procurement. It doesn't take too long to visualize potentially billions of value at stake. You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments and visit us at digitalorgas.com.